Doma Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, uh, you know, the heavyweight fight is coming up with three belts on the line, right? I think August 20th, matter of fact. It's got to be, you know, Alexander Uzik, the legend in Alexander Uzik. I got to say that before I say this guy's name. Versus Anthony Joshua, two-time heavyweight champion, right? Big fight in Saudi Arabia. Now, <clears throat> a heavyweight fight of this magnitude is big anyway. Uh, it's not undisputed yet, but we're hearing some whistles that an undisputed fight uh, can happen. Um, I'm hearing that Bob Arum is talking about, uh, you know, Tyson Fury would fight uh, Uzik, and uh, he was talking to Uzik, and Uzik would fight him, uh, Tyson Fury, for undisputed. Listen, when it comes to Alexander Uzik, that's why he's a legend. That's why he's just like Terrence Crawford. They're legends. These guys are trying to do legendary things, and it's obvious. It's a little bit different than everyone else. Well, not everyone, but most other, other fighters. They're trying for stuff. And Alexander Uzik, who doesn't speak that much English, has been saying when they say, hey, you want to be heavyweight champion by beating Anthony Joshua before the first fight? He was like, no, undisputed. Right? Remember that? He's Because he was undisputed already at cruiserweight, doing so by going to everyone's backyard. That's why it's legendary. People be like trying to act like it's not. But who else is going to everyone's backyard and becoming undisputed? It's not really going to happen. Now, I know that Devin Haney also went to go become undisputed fighting Cambosis. But even Alexander Uzix trumps that because it's not at one. He went for everybody. Marco Hook in Berlin, then went over to Latvia to beat Mars Brightest, which was not easy. Mars Brightest is ridiculous, although he just lost recently. And uh, Mari Gossip in Russia, right? Before that, beating uh, undefeated P Polish guy Glovaki in Poland, beating Michael Hunter in America. After becoming undisputed, he was in England beating up uh, Tony Bellew, who had just came off of two wins versus David Hay. I just like to remind people, never n thinking about the Ukraine, Alexander Ozik. So that's why he's legendary, right? But um, uh, when you're talking about uh, the fight with Tyson, with, uh, Tyson Fury, it's possible because Alexander Uzik has said he would give his word. Basically, he would fight for Undisputed. We know that would happen. But a very something significant before I move on to Alexander Uzik and uh, Joshua. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, Tyson Fury and, his, and uh, Alexander Uzik. But when we're talking about, I hear, you know, some uploaders and stuff talking about um, Terrence Crawford. You know, he was dealing with MTB, MTK Global. Uh, that's this from Daniel Kinningham. It's a long story, but Daniel Kinningham is is Kinningham is a a mob boss who's affiliated with Tyson Fury. Later, uh, t uh, even Terrence Crawford became affiliated with him because of MTP MTK Global, and we're thinking that Terrence Crawford it could be a hinder hinderness hinderness or whatever a, a problem a hindrance for Tyson uh, to for Terrence Crawford to fight your boy Errol Spence. But uh, here we are talking about Tyson Fury, who's really affiliated with the guy, with Undisputed with Alexander Uzik. And the reason why I don't like talking about that, basically, is because I know that Terrence Crawford ain't affiliated with nobody to the point where it's going to mess up a fight. That's why I just think that's really ridiculous to be talking about that. I already know that. The man probably didn't know what time it was, but now I'm pretty sure his, his advisor is not somebody who's going to be messing up his, his fights and his legacy fights and the fact that he's trying to become a legend or is a legend and trying to do other legendary things. I just don't buy that. That's why I wouldn't even uh, do a video about that until I had more evidence that that would be a hindrance. But back to the point. <clears throat> that Anthony Joshua and uh, Alexander Uzik. Right, two heavyweights that weighed in who also has signed for a fight recently, and that's Joe Joyce and um, Joseph Parker. Right, they're about to fight too in September, but they weighed in on that on the next fight coming up in the heavyweight division because it's significant for them, right? And uh, Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker thinks Alexander Uzik is going to win the fight, and even by KOs possibly. And that's just not good news for Anthony Joshua fans, you know, and Anthony Joshua. Period. That's his peers. Um, Anthony Joshua, like I said in another video, he, he this is a very, a very significant to him, for him more so than um, than than Alexander Uzik. You know, at the end of the day, Alexander Uzik could lose. Excuse me, to a guy that big, 
right? And then with the punching power that Anthony Joshua has. Uh, but Anthony Joshua, if he loses this fight, who knows where he goes from here, right? And uh, when you when his peers are already starting to think that you know this little guy is gonna gonna handle him no matter what he does, you see that Anthony Joshua's bulking up too. Alexander Uzik's bulking up. Then if you hear Anthony Joshua's trying to get lean to be faster, it doesn't seem to matter, right? And um, when you start looking at someone with the punching power of Anthony Joshua, right, then you're looking and people think that this little guy is gonna beat him again. Then his aura is totally damaged. He has to win this fight, in my opinion, to get some of that aura back. And you know, we can we know people that's been on this channel for a while back in the at the Joshua Deontay Wilder uh, negotiations. We know we were on different sides of those negotiations, and people did try to act like they didn't know why uh, at the Joshua didn't want to fight this man. But it like uh, just give you an example. If they would ask the same question to Joe Joyce and and um, Joseph Parker, you know, uh, well, Deontay Wilder fights Alexander Uzik, the skinny one we just saw in pictures recently. Doesn't matter. I guarantee you it wouldn't be universally uh, that Alexander Uzik is going to be at uh, Deontay Wilder because of that right hand and the fact that he's, he's, he's fast at getting that right hand. And it's for, for English people who always seem to, you know, get upset when you talk about Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. Well, let me just give you one because I'm pretty sure most of you are probably young. I would pick Herbie Hyde over Anthony Joshua. That's what I would do, right? Because uh, I watched her behind. I, you know, if I was English, you people would be talking about other stuff, Anthony Joshua and all of them. I'd still be talking about her behind. Sometimes, you know, people, everybody, just because somebody doesn't become the very, very, very best, doesn't mean that they didn't have an awesome run. Now, I was watching her behind's run. Totally a Herbie Hyde fan. Right? Because it was the same reasons as I'm a Deontay Wilder fan. He was a little smaller guy not coming in the ring trying to dance around and, 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 and running from these bigger guys. They're stalking bigger guys and have punching power to have bigger guys freak the hell out. Right? That's what Herbie Hyde did. Herbie Hyde was 214 pounds when he fought Riddick Bowe and Riddick Bowe was 241 pounds and his name was Riddick Bowe. Right? It was, I'm not just 241 pounds, I'm 241 pounds and I'm Riddick Bow at the same damn time. And I got this little fly coming over here trying to swat me. Herbie Hyde lost to Riddick Bow. But did you see how? The, the, what he was trying to do? He was devastated after he lost to Riddick Bow. Devastated because he was like, I'm supposed to beat him too. This big old dude was trying to knock him out. Rid hey, Herbie Hyde was, as a matter of fact, speaking of Herbie Hyde, Riddick Bowe said Herbie Hyde was the hardest puncher he faced. And Riddick Bowe faced everybody except Lance Lewis. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, and that's the same thing with Deontay Wilder. Those two guys, Herbie Hyde and Deontay Wilder, was like, we smaller, but I don't give a damn. We trying to knock these bigger dudes out. And we got the puncher power to do it. Right? Man, we're smaller, and if somebody hangs in there for a while and they weigh 30, 40 more pounds than us, then hey, they get us at the end of the day. That's what bigger guys do. That's what David and Goliath is about. Right? But we're supposed to be going for damn David, not Goliath. Right? We give you the words Deontay Wilder was always Goliath. We go going for big old Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. And, you know, probably going for Riddick Bow versus little old Herbie Hyde. Right? Them boys was bad, so I got love for Herbie Hyde and Deontay Wilder because they're smaller. It wasn't a weight division. It ain't a bridger weight like we got now, and it was a little bit over cruiserweight and dealing with these bigger guys and knocking them out, got them running, right? So, you know, when, that's, when you're talking to Anthony Joshua, he's awesome. But because of those chin issues, everyone seems to think he's going to lose to even a guy who doesn't have much punching power. And their reasoning is they don't know if, if, he, uh, if Anthony Josh was not gun shy from being knocked down and knocked out several times, that he's going to just stand in the pocket and just throw his punches and it doesn't matter what's coming back. We don't know if he's possible for doing that. And that's just not really good for Anthony Joshua, for me. So that's why this fight with him is extremely important. Not just to win. He's got to kind of win it and, and show that I'm Anthony Joshua and y'all not. And then there's what he has to do that. But I gave you what I think he really needs to do in another video. I think he needs to go to the body. But that's a whole other video. You're checking my video out for a couple of days ago. Anyway, I'm up out of here. I didn't think that was good news for Anthony Joshua when two good heavyweights that could be facing him soon, Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker, think that Alexander Uzik is going to beat him. Definitely not good news. 
Doing Sports Talk worldwide. And I'm about here, y'all.